All right, everybody. What you just saw was gorilla grafting. And I'm going to explain to you what gorilla grafting is. So stay tuned. Okay, I've got this Bradford pear tree and these things are planted all throughout the city in suburbs and they are uh, obnoxious and they have these little pears that grow on them that birds love to eat. And what they'll do is they'll fly out over different locations, they'll poop those seeds out and then you get wild Bradford pear coming up everywhere and they are almost impossible to get rid of. Highly invasive tree. When we brought our property, this tree was already here. So there are some people that are called themselves gorilla grafters and they'll go out into the city and what they'll do is they'll find a Bradford pear tree, they'll pull down a limb and what they're gonna do is put on a fruiting pear on that tree and then next year rolls around at fruiting season, it blooms and it starts to have edible pears on it. So what they're doing is they're changing the landscape away from this obnoxious tree to something that provides food for the homeless people people just walking down the streets to enjoy, people of the city, and I love it. Okay, so what you see here is where I just came in. I took my little grafting tool. This is the very first thing I ever grafted with. And you can find these things at any like Amazon, eBay, I think I paid 20 bucks for this. And it has an omega shaped cutting blade in it. Makes it real simple. And I'm gonna cut this off for demonstration purposes. This isn't a real fruiting pear, this was just for the to, uh, to show you guys what gorilla grafting is. So if I come in, come on, bring the camera in real close. And I put my blade right in the middle with that orange thing and I make a cut. And whenever I pull that away, there's an omega shaped uh, cut on that end. And there's one on this end also. So this will be your root stock, whatever you want to graft to. And then you take your, your scion wood, your dormant wood, and you just pop right onto that. Put some grafting tape, this grafting tape around your wood. Throw on a rubber band to hold those cambium layers together. And then that will, uh, that will heal itself in a few weeks. And this whole branch would have started growing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you around we had some of these wild seed drop in our fence line and I grafted fruiting pear onto them. So let's move on over there and I'm gonna show you what I did. Okay, we're in our uh, backyard fence row and apparently birds have set on these branches and eat those pear seeds I'm talking about. Why do I say that? Because if you look right here, here is a wild Bradford pear that has come up. Now it looks like it got chopped down. It's come up from different, some several different, um, several different sprouts here around the ground. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take scarlet pear, which is a fruiting pear that I got from one of my, my good friends. And I'm gonna um, prepare it to do grafting onto this, uh, this root stock here. And we're gonna convert this old pear tree that's not good for anything into something that is edible. Once these things get a little bit older, they start getting thorns on them. It's only the grafted variety of Brad, Bradford pear, that, like you saw in our front yard, that uh, has the beautiful uh, leaves on it and stuff like that. When it drops these seeds, you get something a little bit different, and it's not as very it's not very desirable because it doesn't have that beautiful shape that Bradford pear have. All right, so how I'm going to prepare my my scion wood here is I've had this thing stored in the refrigerator as a cutting off of a, off of a tree that came from over the winter. I'm gonna come up about an inch and a half and I'm gonna cut a wedge. You see nice green wood looks good. Cut a wedge on that side and cut a wedge on this side. And you want to, you want one consistent smooth cut. You don't want to sit there and whittle at it and get all these ups and downs, but you want one consistent cut. And I got a little bit of dead right there on the end from when it was originally cut. So we're going to cut that off.
All right. So you can see we got a nice little even cut there, something we can work with. Now we're going to take our parafilm, and I got this off of Amazon. Parafilm wax tape. And I prefer the bigger stuff, but this is all they had in stock at the time that I ordered it. And I don't really prefer this narrow half inch stuff. I like the, the one inch wide tape. So just get it started around the top. Now all this does is this prevents more moisture loss while the grafting process is taking place. So as this Bradford pear behind me, or at least what is the seed stock from a Bradford pear, when it starts pushing new growth, all that sap is going to come up into this fruiting pear, and it's going to call the, uh, cause these buds to start to swell. You can see right there, the buds are pointed up, and that's where a leaf node was at. So I got one here, one there, and one right up here. So I should have three places that new growth is gonna start from. Now, when I first started grafting, I had concerns. It's like, man, when that buds get ready to, to push new growth, is it gonna be able to push through that tape? Absolutely, it'll push right through that tape, no problem. You could probably put several layers of this parafilm wax tape over these bud sites and it would still push growth right through them not only that but over the course of a couple weeks sunshine weather it breaks it down you're killing me smalls yeah I'm, i like this shirt <laughs> this is one of my favorite shirts to do uh to do outside yard work in all right so we got that all parafilmed up so you wrap the entire stick or you leave the end? Well, I gotta leave the end open until I get it grafted. Then I can put another piece on there. Okay, I got you. All right, so if you wanna zoom the camera in, mm -hmm. what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the width of this stick and we're gonna match this up with the same width on one of these other roots, uh, rootstock plants. So that looks about right there. Okay. So we're gonna come in here, cut that off. So you don't use your grafting tool to... No, let me grab the grafting tool. It's okay. got a cutting head on it. There you go. This is about the only thing I would use this grafting tool for anymore. After you do a couple of grafts, you realize that these tools really aren't what they're cracked up to be. And I don't really recommend them. But if you just want to get started with grafting, and you're not sure that you can do it right and it makes you feel better if you have an omega shaped tool to work with then get it try a few graphs with this but after you do uh maybe like 10 15 graphs you'll find out you're not going to need this and you'll move on to other methods once you realize just how simple grafting really is do you need something else from over here that's it. And I'm just going to cut this one right out of my way here. Okay. Cut this one out of the way. Turnip's going to come help. Turnip, you going to help, buddy? All right. Now that I have my, my scion wrapped, I have my root stock diameter selected that I'm going to graft to. Just take my knife and slip, slip right down the middle here. Pop that right in there. Make sure that the cambium edges, let me pull this out, I'm gonna show you. The cambium edges are this little green uh, parts on the sides right here mm -hmm. that's the part that's going to cause this thing to grow it's not the wood right. the wood doesn't cause it to grow it's the cambium layer so that's the part you want to mix match this cambium layer up with the cambium layer on your uh on your root stock okay and it's easier to do if you find a root stock of the same width so you just cut that that root stock off and then you took the took my my blade mm -hmm. and just split it right down the middle so mm -hmm. that I can wedge that 
that graft right in there. All right. Now I'm going to take some more tape and I'm going to finish wrapping it up so it doesn't lose moisture. So that's different than the grafting tool. You still want to do the same thing for the grafting tool. The grafting tool, all it does is, is give you a consistent shape that you can work with. Okay. I think it just kind of more gives you confidence that you can graft mm -hmm. if you've never tried it before. So I have to admit, whenever I was flipping through the old gardening books as a kid, I'm like, grafting, great, I'm gonna learn how to do that. Now nah, forget it, I'm just gonna keep on planting regular plants. Okay. All right, now we got it in there. I just take a rubber band. Just cut the rubber band in half so that I have a something to work with here. And I'm just gonna wrap that up so that it pulls the uh, rootstock up tight against the scion wood. And that's it. So you just tuck it in done. there, the rubber band, you just wrap yep. it around and stick it through and... And then tuck it underneath itself. All right, make a loop with it. Mm -hmm. All right, that's done. We're going to come back in a few weeks. We're going to check the progress. But I'm going to take you over and I'm going to show you some of the other ones that I have done in the past and kind of show you uh, the progress as this went along so far. So let's go on over there. Okay, what you're looking at here is... a. Um, a pear that I grafted onto some Bradford pear rootstock last year. So this was one year of growth. I did this about this time last year because I uh, wrote a letter, sent off to the Department of Agriculture at um, California and they had um, this fruiting pear called 5845. And a lot of people call it killer pear because it's killer good. <laughs> so I came over here to the fence row, and I did the same thing you saw me do over there. I cut it off, I grafted it in. So right here is my graft union, and it didn't take long. It shot way up. I actually did a, uh, a pinch at the top last year. That didn't stop it. It kept growing. But this year, I'm actually starting to get a little, uh, some side shoot branches growing. All right, so my intention is I'm going to let this thing grow. But if it ever comes down to it, to where they want to move this fence or come out and clean this fence. I at least have this much plants that I can come in the winter time and I can harvest scion wood and graft out to other plants. So if What's nothing scion else, wood? Scion wood is what you propagate from. So when this goes dormant in the winter time and all the leaves fall off of it, you can come into little places like this and cut that off and then do what you saw over there. Okay which is grafted onto new rootstock. Mm -hmm. You can buy nursery trees if you don't want to go out and find rootstock to deal with. But um, yeah, this is just to be a big donor tree for future grafting. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things I want to show you is if you look right over here, that's a Bradford pear that is growing in the wild. And I'm talking with my neighbor, John, over there, and I told him, I was like, hey man, I noticed that from my trees over there, a lot of seeds have dropped onto your property and all throughout, there is Bradford pear everywhere. And if you'd like to, I could come out there and graft a fruiting variety. And if nothing else, just let the deer come up here and graze on these uh, fruits and let it just be a benefit for the wildlife. And uh, he liked that idea, but we never took it any further. And we're coming to an end of the grafting season because now we're in late May and you're really taking a chance on your grafts doing well once you graft past June. So um, one of the other things I want to show you is if you look right down here on the this root stop, I put golden boy fruiting pear on here this year. Now this was a large root stop, but I put one on this side and on this side and both both of the uh, the grafts have tape have 
taken. And then I got it down in the bark on this side and down the bark that side. And uh, looks like that's gonna do pretty good. So that's about a month. About a month ago, I put that on there. So that's what you're looking at. This uh, rubber band that's gonna fall off. All the wax will break down. The buds, uh, they shoot right on through. And uh, this time next year, you'll probably be looking at about this much growth. So I've got Golden Boy here. I've got Killer Pear here. And the one that you just saw me do was called Scarlet Pear. And that's a, another southern variety. Um, now, people say sand pears or kefir pears. They kind of look like that. But these varieties are softer. Golden Boy looks like a sand, sand pear. It looks like a kefir pear. But it's a really soft, uh, edible uh, variety. And it's supposed to be really good. So what I want to do is I want to take you over to my kefir pear that I have planted out in my yard. I want to show you some of the grafts that I did over there. So let's go on over to the uh, orchard and let me show you. Come on, turn it. Okay, we're over a kefir pear tree. I planted this pear a year and a half ago, two years ago. But last year, about this time, no it wasn't, two years ago, I came in and I did some grafting. I grafted on Southern King right here and right here. Actually, these, these two are last year's grafts. The year before that, I put on Southern Bartlett right here. So that's the graft union with the Omega tool that I was showing you earlier from three years ago. So I don't know if you can get in there for a good shot, but you can't tell much about it, but that was done with the Omega tool. So I did that graft and I grafted one on right here. And this also is Southern Bartlett. So this is two years worth of growth on our Southern, our southern Bartlett on our keeper tree. This is last year's growth. This is last year's growth. This year, I just did Scarlet. Look at there, Scarlet still has the tape on it. The rubber band fell off. And I did this one probably about six weeks ago. So it's already healed up the, un the union. The rubber band has come undone. All the wax is coming off. And look here how much growth we have on this just in six weeks time. So this, uh, this scarlet graft has done pretty well. Um, over here, I've got Orient. I did Orient last spring. My tag is actually grown into the wood here. And that union is right here. I did a wedge uh, cleft graft right in there. And all this growth is from last year and this and this year also. It didn't fruit this year, but I expect fruit off of it next year. Up here I've got Maxine. The variety of Maxine right here. It's done okay. And then right in here, I have tennis soy. Last spring, I put in tennis soy. Look how much growth off of this leader tennis soy has put out. <laughs> I probably got almost six foot of growth just on this one limb. Mm -hmm. Or at least it looks like six foot from where I'm at. Right. But that is doing very well. So I've got like, what, six varieties? Maybe seven varieties. I got killer pear right here. There's killer pear that you saw me graft of, uh, saw, I was pointing out the graft that I did last year on that. I grafted that last year. There's the graft union, and I've got about three foot of growth just on that, that stem just in uh, one year's time. So, and also this year, I put on Golden Boy six weeks ago. The same time I did Scarlet, I walked right over here, put on Golden Boy. Look at there. It's busted through the, through the rubber bands. The graft union has healed. The wax 
See, there's the big graft that I got in right there where it's pushed out new growth. And look at all this new growth just in six weeks time. So, Golden Boy. So Golden Boy is doing really good. So yeah, we're looking at six varieties of pear that is on this one tree. Kiefer is a hard pear, but the kefir pear does really well where we're at. So I figured, well, if I get a kefir pear as my rootstock, my parent plant, it should provide a good, um, a good base system for all these grafts. So, but the point is, I can only eat so many pears in a year. <laughs> so I only really need one or two trees. So let's just put all the different varieties on as few trees as we can. So that's what we're looking at here. This is a big Franken pear tree. All right. Um, Franken pear. <laughs> all right. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and follow us along. I'm going to keep doing other updates. Hit the like button. And if you really liked it, share it out on Facebook or share it out on your social media. And uh, help other people kind of see what we're doing here. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.